Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor, and today we're going to be covering the lies you were told or been told to by people who think they know. And this is kind of a unique list because I hear it, see it, and been told it on a regular basis for the last 13, 14 years being in the gun business. And we're going to start with number one, and number one is AR. What does AR stand for? This is the AR-15. It's in the news a lot. We sell a bunch of them. They don't want you to have them. But AR does not stand for automatic rifle. It stands for Armalite. Armalite 15 was the first patent of an AR, and that's what AR stands for. So don't let them tell you that AR stands for automatic rifle. All right? Number two, a 22 won't do anything. This is a kind of a silly little deal. Someone will come into the store and goes, oh, I don't want a 22. It'll bounce off or it'll piss the guy off. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. 22 K is just as dead as anything else. It's all about shot placement more than anything else. But think about this. The United States military uses a 5.56 throughout the, throughout the world to defend themselves in uh, other countries. So you can think about a 5.56 and a 2.23 are just a little bigger than the 22. A 22 is a 40 grain bullet where the standard 5.56 would be 55 grains. Now, keep in mind, the 22 is on a little short little rocket and the 5.56 on a bigger rocket. It shoots a lot faster, it's a lot flatter roof, and the bullet does a little bit different things. But it still is a 22. So if a 22 won't do anything, why would we be using it in the military? Number three is Glocks have no safeties. Glocks have safeties, ladies and gentlemen. Every gun that comes in the United States from any country at all or in the U.S. has to have all kinds of drop safeties and sear safeties that are internally in the gun. And most of all good firearms have some kind of trigger safety where the engagement of the trigger turns the safety on and off. You can't grab that tr a trigger from the, slide of a, uh, from the side of the trigger and pull it back, it will not engage. You have to have that little uh, button in front of the trigger on a Glock back for the weapon to fire. Your finger has to be directly on the trigger for it to fire. So you can load a Glock 19 up, load it a full round, rack the slide, and throw it across the room. It's not gonna fire, ladies and gentlemen. That's the deal there. Number four is semi-automatic equals full auto. And it does not. Semi-automatic and full auto are two different things. Semi-automatic means one trigger pull, one bullet. One trigger pull, one bullet. Full auto is when you pull the trigger back, pull the trigger back, and it dumps the magazine. You know, you hear in the news a lot, semi-automatic, full auto. Uh, they know what they're talking about. There's, they're two different kind of things. Now, can you get a full auto in the United States? Yes, you can. You gotta follow all the tax stamps and all the laws and everything. And a full auto AR is probably gonna cost you somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000. So in that scenario, it's just a little button. It's just a little thing, but they cost more money because it's an NFA product or it's a tax stamp product. And you have to follow the guidelines and rules. Do you want a full auto weapon? No, because they're hard to control, hard, hard to contain, and ammo's expensive. And in the movies, they look pretty cool because the guys are shooting and no issue and they're hitting everything they hit. But in real life, it travels, it drives, it, it pushes you, and you're not going to be very accurate with it. So semi-automatic means one trigger pull, one bullet, all right? Number five is women can't rack a slide. Women can do anything a man can do. We just need to teach them the, the, the method of pushing with their arm instead of pulling with their hand. It's leverage, ladies. You can rack a slide. Need help learning that? Stop down the store, we'll show you. Number six, I get this a lot. Uh, guys come in the store, a woman comes in the store and goes, I don't want a big gun, I want a small gun because I'm not gonna be able to carry or hold on to it or anything else like that. And I agree that there are carry guns and there are home defense guns and there are, there are small pistol guns that go in pockets and things like that. But a small gun does not equal small recoil. And this is the challenge of most people when they come in and they say, I want a small gun, they're thinking small recoil. Small gun, less Real estate, less real estate, less weight, less weight, more recoil. Always remember that. Small gun does not equal small recoil. I get people all the time, I protect my house with a shotgun because you cannot miss. Listen, you can miss with a shotgun, trust me. At the distances we're talking about inside of our home, less than 20 feet, less than 
10, 10 feet, 10, 20 feet, 30 feet. That pattern has not been able to open up wide enough to get your pattern. So you want to be understand that you can miss with a shotgun. Uh, shotguns are part of your home defense model. I recommend you have a shotgun in your home, but your shotgun is to get you to your pistol. Because if you have to transition with a shotgun, it becomes a lot more challenging, meaning left and right versus a handgun. Uh, number seven, it, number eight is I'm going to load it when I need it. And I, I find this very um, challenging for me not to shake my finger and look at them. <clears throat> Do you think any cop in town is walking around today with no round in the chamber? They're not. They're not. And it, most of the time, people who say that are not comfortable with the gun to begin with. If you're comfortable with the gun, then you would understand that it's a tool and it only does what you want it to do. And there is some training issues that are going on there, but you must, if you're gonna carry a gun, you must have it ready to go, which means loaded one in the chamber. It's baby steps, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not giving you a hard time, I'm not doing it but you are behind the eight ball. Remember, this is what you have to do. You have to identify a threat, make a decision, and engage in 1.2 seconds. Can't be done. Now, let's do that. Identify a threat, make a decision, engage, draw my weapon, rack my slide. It's not gonna happen. So get more comfortable putting one in the chamber, all right? Number nine, I'm racking the shotgun will scare the bad guy away. This is the one I hear on a regular basis. That's why people buy shotguns. They're not buying the shotgun for any other reasons because they want a racket. If you have a good house, you have good insulation, the bad guy's outside, he's banging on your door, he's banging on your door and you're racking the slide, is he gonna hear it? And if you have the gun ready to go and there's one in the chamber, if you rack the shotgun, you're putting a round on the floor. Are you picking that back up, putting it in the gun to rack it again to, to make sure the bad guy hears it? Mm, I don't think so. So racking the shotgun will never scare the bad guy away. All right? So don't, don't use that as an excuse. Uh, number 10. This is the one that drives me the craziest, right? And I've got a little list here I'm using, so I apologize for looking over every once in a while. But this is the one that always gets me. Guy comes into the store. He goes in the back. He's shooting low and to left. Or he's shooting high and to right. Or he's shooting down. And he tells me, he comes up front. And he goes, can you get a wrench that I can adjust my sights? And I ask him, what's going on? He goes, well, it's shooting low and to left. And I said, you sure it's the gun and not you? And he goes, oh, no, I know how to shoot a gun. And I go back there and I take the gun and I shoot it and it goes exactly where I'm aiming. Maybe it's not the gun and it's you. So before you go adjusting any sights, make sure it's not you. And if it's you, you may need some support or help or take a training class to get yourself more accurate with a pistol. That's my list. I'm sure there's more than this, but I think these are the ones I hear on a regular basis. I would love to hear from you guys and find out what you think about this list and maybe add some stuff to it because I'm sure there's more out there than what I just gave you today. Until next time, guys, God bless, be safe, and remember, you are your first line defense. Comment below and don't forget to subscribe.